What's up, residents? It's your Mayor of Dangerville, Alistair, back once again with some huge news! The Godzilla Kong The New Empire trailer has just released, and my god, guys, it is insane. There is so much to cover in the trailer, I, I don't know where to start. I'm literally so hyped, I've got goosebumps running up my arms. All right, keep it together. Right, we're gonna break down the trailer and have a look at any tiny things you might have missed on your first watch. So the trailer opens up with a seismic reader which are used to detect earthquakes in the nearby vicinity. As you can see based on the reading, it started going haywire, which tells us that a titan is about to rise. Next up, we cut to an island which appears to have a hollow earth tunnel, and obviously this is Monarch that's cornered it off so no one gets sucked into the hollow earth. This could be an entrance that Monarch uses to actually travel to the Hollow Earth. Next up, we get a beautiful shot of the pyramids, which actually gives me heavy 2001 vibes. And then it cuts back to that seismometer, which is showing the earthquake going off. We see the ground shaking by the pyramids, but then something starts digging up. We see the lights from a Hollow Earth tunnel, and then a primate's hand reaches out, and what is that on it? It looks like it's an actual cast, or perhaps even power armor to give him an even more powerful punch. And obviously this monkey hand belongs to that of Kong. And if the leaks have anything to say about it, he's about to fight another giant monster. But I won't get into that because the trailer doesn't actually show it. But we do know something epic is going to happen in this scene. Next up, we cut to a beautiful shot of the Hollow Earth, which is giving me heavy Lord of the Rings vibes. I absolutely love this scenery. And in the foreground, you can see some leaf wings, which we also saw in Godzilla vs. Kong and Kong Skull Island. And in the background there, that little dot we can see is actually Kong, obviously on a mission for something. And behind him you can see he's being chased by a horde of wolf monsters. And I have reason to believe these are death jackals from the comic Birth of Kong. So it's nice to see some crossover there. Makes it feel like a real living universe. Next up we get an amazing shot of Kong jumping over a cliff. And he just looks amazing. Like, I mean, his design is mostly the same as Godzilla vs. Kong. But he seems to have more hair on his shoulders. Which kind of make him look like royalty. And his beard has obviously been made longer. Which I think was a decision made by Adam Wingard. Who now has a big Kong beard himself. And in this shot we see something really interesting. And that's this vehicle thing. I can't tell if it's a kind of drone, but it looks to be powered by some kind of energy that, I mean, it doesn't look like anything I've seen before. If anything, this thing looks like something you'd find on Halo. Like, it looks like the Sentinels. I believe this may be a next evolution of the Heave, which we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong, which makes sense. It seems that every film is going vastly into the future in terms of technology. So, this is just the next step following Godzilla vs. Kong, which I already thought had pretty advanced technology. I didn't know how they'd make it even more advanced, but here we are. The reason I think this is a manned vehicle and not a drone is because of this next shot where we see the doors opening to the middle of a jungle. And in the vehicle is Dr. Eileen Andrews with a new character which has reportedly been called Trapper, played by Dan Stevens. And I assume just off camera is Gia. And then we get this really eerie shot where Kong's in a really misty location and Kong has his axe ready, which made me think he was about to have an encounter with the Scar King, the main antagonist of the film. But no, it actually is a young Kong, or at least a young primate that looks to have some relation to Kong's species. And just look at him, he's so cute! Kong's heart softens immediately. This Diddy Kong appears to be actually closely related to the Scar King that we saw from the title reveal a few months ago, because you can see he's obviously a lot more orange, and his face shape is a lot less gorilla-like and more orangutan-like. Next up, we get another really Lord of the Rings-like shot where we see our lead characters trekking through the jungle, and the scenery is just wild. It's very clear they actually shot this on location, which makes it all feel real. And next up, we get Dan Stevens, which I've heard is actually a really fun character in the film, and they talk about how this handprint wasn't left by Kong, but was in fact left by something bigger. I believe Legendary is actually stating that this handprint from Kong Skull Island is actually the Scar King, the antagonist of the film. And then we get Kong using his axe to fall down this chamber into what looks like a crystal cave. And this purple crystal will actually become relevant later on in the trailer. So remember that, purple crystals. And in this cave we actually see the skull of another Kong. 
In fact, there's several. This looks like the dungeon of where some gigantic titan lives, and it's been eating the Kongs. It could, of course, be another titan entirely, but what's more haunting to think about is what if the Scar King was a cannibal and he's hungry for his next meal, which is obviously really scary. And then we get one of the most incredible shots in the trailer, and that it's this wide shot of what looks like somewhere that's similar to Kong's temple that we saw in Godzilla vs. Kong, except this is filled with other Kongs. I can't tell if this is a flashback or if this is something happening now in the film's timeline. I'm leaning more towards this happening now in the main story's timeline, mainly because of this next shot. There it is, the Scar King with his bright blue eyes looking super menacing. It makes me think the Scar King is gonna hunt down these Kongs, which is gonna really piss off our Kong. Next up we have, and I'm gonna say this a lot, another really beautiful shot of the Hollow Earth. And in it, we see packs of what seems to be Death Jackals. And they seem to be chasing Kong, which means they could be the Scar King's attack dogs, so they can kind of defend his territory. Because it actually looks like the location he's going to is where he finds the young Kong, which obviously I think is related to the Scar King. So this could be like Kong on the rescue kind of thing. Now this next shot is insane, <laughs> because it looks like something you'd see in Godzilla vs. Megalon. We seem to stumble across a civilization of Hollow Earth Ewes, which I actually theorized about probably like two years ago and eventually come across a vast civilization related to the Iwi tribe from Skull Island. But these people have a much more vast and developed city built from thousands of years of inhabitants in the Hollow Earth. And these are a lot more advanced than the ones we saw on Skull Island. They look to have kind of Aztec architecture mixed with Egyptian since they all look like pyramids. And in the back, we see them utilizing some kind of Hollow Earth energy. So this is just incredible. It kind of blows my mind that this is the same universe as Godzilla 2014. But at this point, I've just gone, oh, I'm ready. It's a roller coaster. Just do what you want. And my God, are they doing what they want? Because this is insane. And here we see Bernie back from Godzilla vs. Kong. And in the background is Dan Stevens' character. It seems like they've kind of recruited each other to go on this mission and in the background we see the Iwis have actually got weapons, so I don't think they're meant to be there. It seems like they've snuck in without Monarch's permission. That would be a very Bernie thing to do. And I don't even know what to make of this. It looks like a staircase similar to what we actually saw in Godzilla King of the Monsters, where Serizawa climbed that humongous staircase towards Godzilla, where he was resting to kind of replenish his radiation. So at the top, they could be assisting Godzilla. Next up, we get a shot of where I think is Italy, where some kind of crustacean leg stomps on a civilian, and everyone else kind of panics and runs away, which is great. One of the characters says Kong can't stop this on his own, obviously implying that the Scar King is planning to destroy the planet, or at least take over the surface, and that the Scar King is simply too powerful to be taken alone. Chances are that cyborg arm we see Kong wearing, he got after he broke his arm in a fight against the Scar King. And then we see Geo reaching into this energy source and something's happening with it, which could just be a reaction from whatever radiation this is, but it could be implying something more. We'll have to wait and see to find out what that is. And then we cut to some kind of Arctic location and Eileen Andrews says he won't be alone. And the camera zooms in and we get a look at Godzilla hibernating in some crystal cave and underneath him, we see the same purple energy that we saw in that earlier shot. So clearly this is kind of like a source of radiation, which gives me Energon vibes from Beast Wars, which I'm not against. And it's already been confirmed that Godzilla is using this radiation to evolve, to become even more powerful, to go against the Hollow Earth Titans that threaten the surface. And then Godzilla starts waking up. Instead of the classic blue energy which we're used to, now it's this kind of magenta, which I gotta say looks really nice. It makes sense since it's all over the promotional material. We see him crashing out of the glacier, which reminds me of King Kong vs. Godzilla, so that's a nice reference. And then he roars into the sky, and clearly Monarch anticipated this because there's helicopters circling him. Now I will say the CGI in this shot is atrocious. 
<laughs> it's not very good. Like, it looks like something someone made on SFM, but it is still unfinished, so I'm going to give it the benefit of the doubt for now. And if there's any reason that the CGI isn't great, it's probably because we're going to get more monster action in this film than any other MonsterVerse film. So it seems like they're trying to sacrifice some of the effects to get more monsters out there, which, you know what, I'm not against. Godzilla Minus One didn't have the best effects, but my god did it utilize it well. And Godzilla's design here is... I really like it, guys. I mean, I've seen some toys, and the toys look awful. They don't look very good. But the spines? The head? The fact he's more spiky, kind of like Millennium Godzilla? It looks amazing. I really like it. I'm actually gonna say I almost like it more than the King of the Monsters design. Jared Krzyzewski did an amazing job here. And then we get some more shots of the Scar King, and then, oh my god, look how good he is. He looks a lot like Cobra from that rebooted Planet of the Apes film, which I really like. That's exactly the kind of vibe I wanted for this character. And on his shoulder, we see what looks to be a bone weapon. And I think this is actually going to be the rumored whip. So we're going to have to wait and see how that actually works against Godzilla. I don't know how a bone whip's going to hurt him, but I guess we'll see. And then we get a continuation of that one shot from earlier where we see all the Kongs stood around. And then the Scar King jumps down and we get our first good look at his face. And look at him. He's... he's bald! Oh, 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 but seriously, I really like the way he looks. He's really different. This is going to be unlike any enemy Titan we've had in a Godzilla film. He's going to be smarter, more ruthless, and more evil than any other Titan the King of the Monsters has stood against. So I really can't wait to see what he does. This shot transitions to another shot of him roaring at where I think is Brazil. This looks to be the same shot that we saw filming a few years back where people started running away from the ocean. Now, this was shot in Australia as a stand-in for Brazil. So does this mean the final fight between the Scar King, Godzilla, and Kong is gonna be in Brazil? They actually released a new poster for Godzilla Kong, which actually shows our Titans teaming up. And where are they? in Brazil. So maybe this is where the actual film's gonna conclude. And then we get a great shot of Godzilla learning how to use his new atomic breath. We see his cells kind of still mutating. There's kind of like a biological factor here. So he's kind of getting used to his new body and new powers, which is gonna be way more powerful than his previous atomic breath, which I don't know how he's gonna be. He already shot to the Earth's core. So this is gonna be incredible to watch. He looks back like, oh yeah. So I really like how they're giving personality to Godzilla without going overboard, it still feels really in character for him. And then we cut to a close shot of Kong with his big old beard. I just want to scratch it. And then Godzilla blasting his atomic breath, and it looks super powerful. And then the money shot. Godzilla climbing out of the ground and Kong falling from the ceiling, and then they run together, roaring straight at whatever enemy stands before them. Now, I feel like this isn't going to be the Scar King, mainly because this doesn't look like his hideaway. These crystals don't really match his vibe. In the title reveal, we see he has more of a, like, a volcanic throne room, but he could have joined another monster for this fight. It has to be something big, considering they're both teaming up to take it down. I'm not really a huge fan on how fast the monsters run here. They don't really feel heavy or massive. They just kind of feel like CGI creatures. But this is the Hollow Earth, so who knows how physics is affected here? Like the gravity could be lower, or the air resistance could be lower, or whatever excuse they can give to make them run faster. Either way, they look really angry. And also, just look how big Godzilla's arms here. This guy's gonna start punching, just mark my words. And then the title card, Godzilla Kong, The New Empire. But before it's over, we get a last shot of Diddy Kong, which I'm sure has a name, but we'll figure that out later. <laughs> and then Bernie says, is that a mini Kong? As they look up at him doing that little chest bump that Kong does, which is really cute. Clearly Kong's been teaching him a thing or two. So that was the trailer breakdown. Wow, this trailer, guys, it's so overwhelming. I didn't think they could make the MonsterVerse more crazy, but they've gone and done it. This looks next level. Now, there's obviously a lot of unanswered questions with this trailer, like where did this baby Kong come from? And what is Gia's purpose with this Hollow Earth civilization? We can, of course, theorize and speculate about what any of these things could be, but only time will tell. We've got plenty more videos about Godzilla Kong The New Empire to come, so subscribe and stomp the notification button to become a resident of Dangerville today. What did you think about The New Empire's trailer? Did you love it? Let us know in the comment section down below. And be sure to give this video a big Kong-sized thumbs up. I've been Alistair, and we'll see you residents in the next one.